Welcome to Unit 8. There's no life without books. My name's Anastasia and I'm here to work with you. This is Unit 8. There's no life without books. It is Lesson 3. Is poetry enjoyable? At first, let's answer some questions. Do you like poetry? Who's your favorite poet? Is poetry enjoyable? Why or why not? Pause the video if you need to think your answers over. Now let's go into detail and learn the difference between rhyme and rhythm. So what is rhyme? Is the correspondence of words on syllables, while rhythm is the pattern of the poem marked by stressed and unstressed syllables. Now to the rhythm. Rhythm is the pattern of stressed and unstressed syllables or beats. We can have lamb, trochee, Spondy, dactyl, and anapest. These are some different types of rhythm. Have you ever felt like a poet? It's your chance for right now. Open the book at page 207 and deal with exercise 2a. Page 207, exercise 2a. You have to read and listen the limericks and continue the sentences. Unit 8, Lesson 3, Exercise 2A There was an old man of the north who fell into a bowl of broth, but a very good cook fished him out with a hook, which saved the old man of the north. There once was a lady of Gloucester, whose parents thought they had lost her. From the fridge came a sound, and at last she was found. But the problem was how to defrost her. There was a young monster in York, which liked to eat soup with a fork. People cried, what a mess, we must go to Loch Ness. We use forks to eat pork here in York. You need to eat. Now let's check your answers. All these pieces of poetry are called limericks. Please complete the fact file about them and pause the video for a minute. Now let's have a look at the right definition. A limerick as a piece of humorous poetry which consists of five rhyming lines. The rhyming lines are rhymed by a scheme AABBA. A limerick goes back to the 18th century island. It was popularized in English by Edward Lear in the 19th century, although he did not use the term. Now when you know the definition of limerick, we can easily move on to the next slide. It's grammar time. We're discussing relative pronouns. Относительные местоимения. Who используется в отношении человека. В частности, употребляется для связи с подлежащим. Who также относится к человеку. Which животному или вещи. Whose. В частности, используется говоря о людях. What относится к неживым существам, вещам. Да, имеет отношение к человеку, к животному, либо же к вещи. You can have a look at several examples. A woman who has a book. The man whom the book belongs. 
The book which I borrowed is big. A man whose the book is. The map was what he talked about. He bought a book that has pictures. For further information, you can go to page 262 in your books. 262 in your books. Now let's imagine that you're a critic. Characterize the poems you have read and please use the help box. If necessary, pause the video. Now it's time to practice your speech. Speak about your likes or dislikes in books. Use the help box. Pause the video if necessary. Now let's fill in the gaps with an appropriate relative pronoun because it's brainstorm. Use your books. We are dealing with exercise five, page 209. It's exercise five, page 209. Please check your answers right now. If it is necessary, pause the video. Imagine that you're a writer. Write about the Belarusian authors you know. Use who, whose, whom, and which. Thank you very much for your cooperation. See you later, alligator. Bye.